Uh, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a motion layout animation uh, which will be very similar to the one you see on official YouTube application. So uh, I have received a lot of positive feedback from my previous video about motion layout and uh, now I have decided to create uh, one even better example which you can see all the time. So uh, this tutorial will have two parts and I have decided to split it up because I know that you guys don't like long videos. So the first part will be about creating the start endpoint and the second one about uh, end endpoint. And uh, if you're not already familiar with the motion layout, I recommend you to watch my other video first. Uh, okay, so uh, as you already saw in that preview, uh, we're going to create a motion layout animation, which uh, will be uh, something similar to the one uh, which we have in a YouTube application. So uh, this is uh, our project and uh, I have just created the one uh, bottom navigation menu. So this menu will have uh, three items, home, dashboard and notifications. So uh, I'm going to split this uh, video tutorial in two parts. Parts. And in this first part, we're going to create a uh, start endpoint, and in the next part, we're going to create an end endpoint. Okay, so let's uh, switch to activity main layout, and here uh, we're going to start creating our layout. So the first thing uh, we need to remove this default text view. We don't need that, and your root uh, layout needs to be constraint layout if you want to convert that to a motion layout later. So uh, at this point, I'm using uh, constraint layout 2.0.4, and you should uh, double check your dependencies. Uh, if you have this um, constraint layout dependency because this uh, is important if you want to use motion layout and uh, this dependency is uh, included by default in a uh, android studio 4.1 and higher so let's close that for now and here first we're going to start by adding a bottom navigation view so let's uh, just drag and drop that here okay so for the height i'm going to select uh, wrap content for now and i'm going to constrain that uh, left the right and the bottom so zero here, okay. And here I'm going to add our uh, menu. So bottom nav menu, and this is how it should look like. So uh, the next thing uh, I'm going to add the recycler view on top of that. So just drag and drop that here. And I'm going to set its default height for now, uh, 200 dp, but we're going to change that later. So uh, I'm going to constrain this um, recycler view horizontally with the parent, uh, bottom with our bottom navigation view, okay. So the next thing, we need to add uh, one more constraint layout, which will basically represent uh, just a background and a container. And we are not going to nest any views inside that uh, new constraint layout, because motion layout does not support uh, nested views, and that's really important for you to uh, note. So before we continue, I just want to change uh, IDs here. So, uh, okay, so we already have ID here, bottom navigation view, and here I just want to add a new ID, so recycler uh, view, okay. So next uh, we need to find here a constraint layout, so it will just represent uh, something like a container or a background, and its uh, height should be 250, okay. So I'm going to constrain that uh, horizontally, and uh, on the top with the parent, I'm going to set top margin to zero. So uh, the next thing uh, what we need to do, uh, we need to connect this uh, recycler view with uh, our uh, uh, constraint layout on the top and we need to set uh, this uh, layout height now uh, to 0 dp so it can expand in a full height here okay so now i'm going to uh, set the id of this uh, new constraint layout okay it uh, already have id and i'm going to change that to a main container and also i'm going to set its uh, background color so i'm going to choose um, 10% opacity of uh, our black color so it will have a color something like that and here okay so i need to change that uh, ID here as well. All right. So the next thing what we need to do, uh, we need to add uh, one image on top of this uh, main container, but we are not going to nest uh, our image view inside that. Instead, we're going to place on top of that, okay? So just let's add one image view right there. And here I'm going to select, uh, for example, this one as a background. So of course, uh, you can add a simple view instead of this uh, constraint layout. So it can just represent one background, but uh, that's totally on you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, place this image view outside of this uh, container. Okay, and now I need to constrain this uh, image view with this uh, container. So I'm going to do that uh, manually down below. And before that, I'm going to change this ID to be uh, main uh, image view. And here I'm going to add uh, constraints. So um, I'm going to connect uh, constraint start with the start of uh, our uh, main container. Okay. 
Next we have a constraint uh, top with the top of our main container as well and constraint uh, bottom to uh, bottom of our main container. Okay, so it will be constrained like that and uh, I'm going to change its height to be uh, 0 dp so it can expand in a full height and also I'm going to set here um, scale type attribute to center crop okay so it can look something like that and we're going to increase its width uh, to match parent but before that we need to add a few more uh, items here or views so next uh, we need to add uh, two image views which will represent two icons uh, close and play so let me add uh, new images here the first one is this close okay so I'm going to again place this uh, image view outside this uh, container and basically I'm going to constrain this uh, icon with our main container so I'm going to do that uh, manually as well and I'm going to change this ID to say close uh, image view okay and here let's add constraints so constraint uh, end to end of main container okay next we have a constraint top to top of our main container and the constraint uh, bottom to bottom of our main container okay so that looks nice and also I want to set this uh, right uh, margin to 16 for now okay so next thing I want to add one more image here and I'm going to select this uh, play button I'm going to put this image view outside of this uh, main container okay I'm going to change its ID to say uh, play image view okay perfect and now I'm going to constrain this uh, image view with this first uh, image. So bottom constraint uh, right there and uh, top constraint uh, right there. So uh, the actual margin between those two icons should be uh, 24. So let's add a 24 here. And uh, I need to add uh, one more thing and that is a text view here, okay? So I'm going to place this text view right there. And of course I'm going to put this text view outside of this uh, main container. I'm going to constrain this uh, right constraint to this play button, uh, left constraint to this uh, image view, to this main image view, and the top and bottom can be constrained uh, here with this uh, icon so that can be centered. Okay, so the left margin can be set to 8 and the right margin to 12. Okay, so now we can set its uh, layout width to be 0 dp so it can expand in a full uh, width here. So now I need to change this uh, ID of this text view and I'm going to say this uh, title uh, text view. Uh, here I'm not going to change this uh, default text so it can stay this way. We're going to change that uh, later. And now I want to add uh, one uh, attribute here named uh, ellipsize and I'm going to set that to end. So what does this uh, ellipsize do? Well, I'm going to show you now. So for example, let's uh, add here uh, some longer text. So I'm going to write some random characters and also I need to set this um, here uh, max lines to one and now you will see that uh, all longer text will display those three dots because it cannot expand anymore because we have specified its uh, its width and uh, also max lines of one so if uh, the text is a little bit longer then it will display only those three dots okay so that's the the actual this uh, ellipse size attribute and i'm going to remove now this text so we don't need that at this moment and there are only a few more things which we need to add uh, before we um, finish this first part so uh, as you can see so now we need to hide our bottom navigation view and uh, i'm going to basically set its uh, height to 1 dp okay and now it will be basically hidden and also i need to set its uh, alpha value to zero okay and i need to specify alpha values to some of those uh, items as well so i'm going to add the alpha value to those three views so let me just scroll down below so close uh, image view let's add alpha value here to uh, zero okay i'm going to copy this uh, here to play image view as well and to our uh, text view of course so uh, those views uh, will be hidden uh, when we actually display our uh, image view here here in the full width and height so uh, now i need to expand this uh, image view uh, to match the parent so let me just uh, okay i'm going to change its width to see um, to fit match parent okay and this is how our uh, first uh, start endpoint should look like so we have this image view in a full uh, width and height then we have this recycler view and our bottom navigation view is uh, hidden like uh, those three views and uh, those three views uh, will be shown uh, when we actually cr start creating our end endpoint and we're going to do that in the next video